Buying your own wetsuit enters you into a brand new world of different neoprenes, internal linings. Well, this one has wrist zippers and that one's purple. Is, is that a good thing? Te but wetsuit technology has come a very long way since they very first appeared. And in case you haven't already noticed, not all wetsuits are the same. So scuba diving wetsuits, for example, are different from surfing wetsuits. Surfing wetsuits are nice and stretchy so they can move around and you can do their surfing thing. Thing, but they compress really easily. So when you're scuba diving, then nah, just go for a scuba diving wetsuit. You'll stay much warmer. Scuba diving wetsuits are made for scuba diving. Scuba diving wetsuits are made to keep you warm under pressure. So they resist compression compared to other wetsuits. A wetsuit is useless at keeping you warm if the insulation is all crushed at depth. And that's exactly where it's the coldest. So wetsuit manufacturers release an entire range of suits as well that vary wildly in price. But why? And that's what we're going to be covering in today's video. So let's take a look at what to look for when buying a wetsuit. Wetsuits range from about half a mil to eight mil thick. You don't tend to get much thicker because eight mil is already almost half an inch thick all over you and you're getting a bit excessive there. The three standard thicknesses are 3mm, 5mm and 7mm. 3mm is kind of your tropical water standard. It's thin and flexible and not too buoyant. Uh, if you want some protection from kind of long dives in warm water or if you feel the chill, then yeah, 3mm is the way to go. 5mm is your Goldilocks. It's thick enough to keep you warm, but not too thick to be overly floaty or cumbersome. You'll find the widest range of wetsuits in the 5mm range. 5mm has the most practical range of operating temperatures, and by simply adding hoods, layers, and gloves, you can drastically increase your warmth. Most divers end up with at least one 5mm suit in their kit locker. 7mm is for cold water diving, but many divers skip over the 7mm suit for a dry suit. They're just too much overlap in the temperature ranges of a 7mm and a dry suit, and dry suits just keep you that much warmer. If you're really not into dry suits and you really do want a semi-dry or just a thick old wetsuit, then yes, 7mm will be the warmest that you can get without just layering up. They'll have the best seals to keep you uh, to keep water from moving around inside the suit and they often come with a hood as well so they're best for cold water diving. The neoprene itself is a physical barrier to trap heat and isolate you from the water, but it still gets into the suit, but that's fine, that's supposed to happen. And now the internal lining steps up. So the outside of a suit is usually a traditional lining that basically keeps you from ripping the neoprene. That's all it's really meant to do. Just let the suit stretch a bit, but not rip. Neoprene itself is actually quite delicate, and the first generations of wetsuit, it was quite easy to rip. The internal lining is very different and ranges from nothing at all to plush linings. No lining at all is called open cell and is both the best and the worst at the same time. Open cell neoprene sticks to skin like glue. It's great at trapping water so it doesn't move around your suit, so you stay really nice and warm. However, it is a workout just to get into an open cell wetsuit and it is so delicate as well that you can put a finger through it if you're not that careful. You can often get standard lining on the inside of a suit too, which helps you get in and out of the suit, but it doesn't really do a great deal to keep you warm, so you only tend to see it in cheaper suits and on the extremities of fancier suits. Said fancy suits tend to have plush linings on the core, and what this does is it traps water so that cold water doesn't flush around the suit. It also dries fast between dives if you hang it inside out, which makes your next dive much nicer. So it's definitely worth investing in a suit with a fancy lining. On the inside of every full length wetsuit, you'll see a bunch of labels telling you not to iron your wetsuit and what it's made out of, but you should also see a letter on one of those pages. Exposure suits are graded by CE Thermal Protection Class, A through D. Shorties and wetsuit pieces don't always have ratings, and if you're outside of the EU, you may not have any sort of rating, so don't be put off if your suit doesn't have anything. So A is the best 
grade and is fairly rare for wetsuits to be honest. More A ranked suits are dry suits, but you can find a rare few wetsuits with an A rank. So A ranked suits can be used in water temperature ranges down to seven degrees Celsius. Of course, dive duration and other factors apply. Uh, so don't just grab an A class suit and jump into seven degree water and just think that you'll be fine for the whole dive. But if you found an A class suit in your price range, then go for it. B class suits are around 10 to 18 degrees Celsius, C's are around the 16 to 24, and D's are only really recommended for temperatures above 22 degrees Celsius. Uh, and this is why you can have five mil suits range from really, really cheap to really, really expensive. And that's because the fancy suits have a whole range of features that insulate you better. But if you're not going anywhere too cold, then you don't have to go crazy on suits. You can kind of pick and choose the kind of the thermal performance class that meets your criteria. Seals make a big difference to the warmth of a wetsuit because they are the bouncers that control the amount of water that gets into the wetsuit. So wetsuit seals can be found at the wrist cuffs, the ankles, the neck, and kind of under the zipper as well. So the most basic type of seal is simple rolled neoprene. It's just folded over itself and then stitched, and that's about it. It doesn't really act to stop any water, but it does create a tighter section around your arm or leg that makes it harder to get in. It's basically a velvet rope that you can walk around and get into the club, but that's about it. It slows you down, but you can still get in. Glide skin and other similar smooth skin or whatever the wetsuit manufacturers call it is a good way to keep water from flushing in and out of your suit because it creates a seal against your skin and itself that water struggles to get past. So that's the decent bouncer that's actually checking for IDs. If you find glide skin, it'll be against your arm or your leg for a few inches or something, uh, which is kind of the standard. Sometimes you see it facing outwards, so that it seals against gloves that you're wearing over the top, and you can always roll it in on itself if you're not wearing the gloves to create a seal against your arm. You can also see a Canadian seal, which is a ring of glide skin or similar inside the forearm or lower leg. These are pretty good too, and they don't feel tight or invasive at all around your arms or legs. Around the neck, you'll often find glide skin, and sometimes you have a little zipper as well, so you can tighten and loosen that neck seal to your preference. And check underneath the zipper as well. Um, at least you want to see a flap of neoprene that stops the cold water from just flowing through the the zipper, but you can find some suits that have dedicated seals um, and even whole gussets to stop the water from flushing in. The neoprene your suit is made from makes a big difference. You can feel a good wetsuit when you touch it compared to a cheap suit. Cheaper suits tend to be made from petroleum based, which is okay, but the uh, they're not great for you nor the environment. New neoprene blends are coming out that are much better for the environment and they're actually made from limestone somehow, I don't really understand the science, but try to look for non-petroleum suits that have passed PAH and REACH testings for the best neoprenes and give it a feel as well. Cheaper neoprene feels coarse and stiff. Fancy neoprene lining will feel smooth and thick. Uh, if you kind of stretch it as well, it will have a good amount of flex. If you can afford it, then go for a better suit that brags about its flexibility. It will make donning and doffing much, much easier and won't restrict you in the water when you need to reach for something. Many suits will be made from two or three different thicknesses of neoprene, and you'll often see that in its name. If something's called the 5.4mm or the 5.4.3 wetsuit, then it will have panels of 5mm neoprene over your chest, your back, and probably your thighs as well, the key heat loss areas. Uh, this is there to keep you warm, but behind your knees and under your armpit, you'll have thinner material so that you can move around. The same goes for hoods and gloves. You often have the thick thickest materials over your head and the back of your hand, but thin material around your face and around your palms as well, around your neck to improve movement. 
All suits will have stitched seams holding their panels together, but some stitches are better than others. As a general rule of thumb, the fewer the seams, the stretchier the suit. Neoprene stretches, but the seams don't. So if you have a suit that is just lots of little panels and stitching in between, then it probably won't stretch as much as a suit with big open panels. Also, look for where the seams actually are. If they cross high movement areas and sensitive areas, then feel if you think that they'll rub over time. We tend to find three types of stitches on wetsuits, overlock, flat lock, and blind stitch. Overlock is a pretty cheap and easy stitch, but it creates a bit of a ridge that can rub, so don't try, well, we don't tend to see it that much on wetsuits, to be honest, anymore. Flat lock you'll find on warmer water suits because it's nice and flat against your skin, but it goes through the neoprene, so water can seep through. Blind stitch only goes halfway through before coming back on itself, and uh, you often find double blind stitch as well. So on sort of basically one on each side, but no single pinhole goes all the way through the neoprene, which is a good way for staying warm because the water can't get through. Blind stitch can rub sometimes, unfortunately, so you can often find seams are glued or taped as well, so they're soft against your skin, but that also helps to seal any pinholes through the neoprene too. Taping seams is better for comfort, as some glued seams can become rough when they actually the glue dries, so check them out before a long dive, just kind of feel for it and feel if it's just course. Gluing also helps prevent cut threads from unraveling, so it's good to look for glued outer seams on gloves especially. It's important that your suit fits, not only so that you look good on the dive boat, but so that your suit actually does its job. If your suit is too tight, then you're just going to cut off blood flow, which is dangerous, too loose, and the water will just flush in and out of your suit, and you might as well have left it behind. Wetsuits work by letting a small amount of water in and then keeping it against your skin so it warms up. If that warm water just flushes out and is replaced again and again with cold water, then you're just gonna get cold really, really fast. You want snug seals around your neck, your wrists, and your ankles so that water can't just flush in and out. If other parts of the suit are a little bit baggy, it's not the end of the world. Once you get your wetsuit and actually try it on, you should be able to kneel down and touch the back of your neck without too much res uh, resistance. If you can, then it's big enough. If you feel resistance, then it's a little bit too small. Too big and you'll just feel yourself moving around inside the suit too much. Neoprene isn't your only choice when it comes to cold water exposure protection. Of course you have dry suits, but you also have alternative materials to neoprene. Materials like lava core, thermocline, and shark skin are all fabric materials that do a similar job to neoprene and keep you warm in the water. These materials tend to be three layer fabrics with a flexible outer layer like neoprene, a middle layer that prevents water from permeating through like neoprene, and an internal plush layer that acts like an internal layer of a wetsuit and traps water from moving around, much like wetsuits. So this material tends to be hypoallergenic as well for those that usually react to neoprene, and best of all, they are neutrally buoyant. Because they don't use any trapped gas bubbles to insulate you, they don't change buoyancy as you ascend and descend, so you don't have to adjust your weight belt. The downside is, is that they only really equate to a 2 or maybe a 3 mil wetsuit as far as warmth, so they're best kept for warmer waters unfortunately, so not your autumnal diving. And now for a quick lesson in wetsuit lingo so that you can understand the terms that you may come across. So semi-dry. A semi-dry is a wetsuit that has some features of a dry suit, so you stay dry for a lot of the dive, but when actually water does make its way in, it still keeps you warm like a wetsuit. They tend to have the best warmth ratings, but they're usually 7 mils. Steamer. A steamer is just a full length wetsuit. Some just call it a steamer. I don't really know why. Some call it a full length wetsuit, but yeah, it's just a full length. Shorty. A shorty is for tropical diving and it's just a full length wetsuit with the sleeves cut off. Um, that's, that's about it really. 
So Farmer Johns, you don't tend to see many Farmer Johns anymore, but they're a two-part suit with long pants or salopettes and a jacket that's worn over the top, usually with a beaver tail. Beaver tail is a crotch strap for your jacket wetsuit. It loops between your legs and it clips to your sort of front so the jacket doesn't ride up. Systems for colder waters, some suits are actually available as a two part system where you get a suit and then a shorty that's meant to be oversized that goes over the top as well so you've got twice as much thickness over your core. You don't tend to see too many of these either anymore. They tend to just be kind of restricted to like dive school suits. And that's about it really. So let us know in the comments below what you look for in a wetsuit and which suit that you would buy if money was no object. Let's talk skin tight rubber suits in the comments below. Gotta hit that demographic. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching and safe diving. Seals are, 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 make a big difference. <laughs> 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 So the three standard thri oh, that's hard to say. Is going to be focused on single cylinder divers because I'm presuming that's what most of you watching are. Uh, and then right at the end, I'm gonna be talking about the different disciplines and how that can affect your BZD choice. Uh, because your choices expand when you start to switch up from single cylinders. So let's take a look at what you should look for when buying a BCD.